immunity is of uh, main two types innate immunity and acquired immunity in acquired immunity we have cell mediated immunity and humoral immunity i have already made one detailed video on cell mediated immunity i have given the link in the description section you can watch the video today we will talk about humoral immunity so humoral immunity is because of some mediators which are secreted in blood and that is the antibodies and here we are talking about acquired humoral immunity so that's why we will be talking about antibodies in innate immunity as well we have some soluble mediators which are secreted into the blood so that is not the agenda here we are talking about acquired humoral immunity so when we talk about acquired that means this immunity gets active only after exposure to the antigen mean the basic fundamental apparatus is present in the body but the activation of immunity occurs only after exposure to the antigen and this type of immunity is specific to the antigen that means the antigen which is stimulated the immunity the immunity will be active only against that antigen and not any other antigen so let us see what is this humoral immunity well the main components of humoral immunity as i told you is antibody secreted into the blood but it is secreted by some cells which are b lymphocytes okay b lymphocytes acquired immunity is by lymphocytes in which t lymphocytes are responsible for cell mediated immunity and b lymphocytes secrete antibodies which is responsible for humoral immunity so the cell itself is not going to fight with the invader in fact it secretes the soluble mediators which go and fight with the mediators so now let us go on to the specifics the development of the b cell and how these antibodies are secreted what is the structure of antibodies and the mechanism of action of these antibodies so b cells develop in the bone marrow by hematopoietic stem cell so this hematopoietic stem cell it is a stem cell it is a pluripotent stem cell which has the ability to produce different kinds of wbcs and even red blood cell and platelets so it divides into different uh, types of lineages we call it or families which can give rise to a particular type of cell so on differentiation it produces a particular type of cell that is lymphoid progenitor cells and this lymphoid progenitor cell can either form t cell or b cell the t cell precursor moves to the thymus where t cells are produced but the b cell precursor remains in the bone marrow so the development of b cells takes place in the bone marrow itself and this process is known as pre processing pre processing and what is happening in pre processing there is development of the b cell there is formation of clones of b cells so there will be different clones of b cells and what is importance of these clones that these clones have the ability to react to one particular type of antigen so that is known as attainment of antigenic diversity antigenic diversity that means each particular type of clone of b cell will release antibodies which is going to react to only one particular type of antigen so that is antigenic diversity so there are stages there is pro b cell pre b cell and naive b cell this naive b cell has on its surface some receptors as we saw in cell mediated immunity there are t cell receptors on naive b cell we have receptors and thousands of receptors are there and these are nothing but immunoglobulin m and immunoglobulin d okay these immunoglobulin m and immunoglobulin d they are present on the surface of the b cell and they can recognize the antigen remember immunoglobulin m is present but immunoglobulin m can also be secreted but igd is never secreted it just acts as a receptor present on the b cell so that is naive b cell and then this naive b cell after formation from the bone marrow it moves into the blood and moves into different lymph nodes lymph nodes and also in various lymphoid tissue present in git respiratory tract everywhere it moves and it just sits there along with the group of the t cells so there is like um, 
population of cells there is a population of t cells there is a population of b cells there is a population of macrophages which is sitting in these lymph nodes now what will happen when there will be exposure to antigen so here this diagram is showing one cell that is the antigen presenting cell that is say macrophages again antigen presentation i have made a detailed video the link i have given in the description section do watch that video as well fine so this is the antigen presenting cell that is the macrophage and you see that it processes the antigen and presents the antigen to b cell by the way b cell is also an antigen presenting cell it can also take up and process the antigen but here we are talking about b cell activation right so this macrophage is presenting the antigen to the b cell and uh, you see this is the receptor that is immunoglobulin d or immunoglobulin m and along with that this macrophage is also presenting same antigen to t cell right and this is helper t cell now this helper t cell when it differentiates into a particular type subset of t cell that is th2 subset helper t cell has many subset th1 subset th2 subset th17 subset okay i have talked about all this in cell mediated immunity uh, video okay so once it uh, differentiates into th2 subset this subset releases some lymphokines that is interleukin 4 interleukin 5 and interleukin 6 which cause the activation of the b cell and that is why these interleukins are also known as b cell growth factors or b cell stimulating factors right so remember that for b cell activation two things are required one antigen presentation right and second release of lymphokines by helper t cells otherwise b cell activation is not going to take place because helper t cell helps all the cells all other cells right so this interleukins 4 5 6 are required for activation of the b cell fine so once this happens what are the changes which take place in the b cell first b cells enlarge in size and form what is known as lymphoblast so now these b cells are known as lymphoblast and further these lymphoblasts differentiate into plasma blast so what is the difference between these cells see basically the ability of the b cell to secrete antibodies is increasing so synthesis of the antibodies is required so the cell organelles which are required for the synthesis of the proteins they are going to increase in the number cell size is going to increase so that all these cell organelles can be accommodated within the cell right so lymphoblast then plasma blast and finally there is formation of plasma cells these plasma cells are end cells they have a very short life span of only 2 to 3 days but in this 2 to 3 days they produce a lot of antibodies like of the magnitude of 2000 antibodies per second each plasma cell is going to produce and you know that one plasma blast can form 500 plasma cells understanding so each of these plasma cell is secreting 2000 antibodies per second it's huge okay but the life span is a small because we don't want that it to continue forever so there is a checkpoint as well so this is how activation of the b cell takes place and the antibodies are released and remember that the antibodies released by these plasma cells are of single specificity they are going to react to a particular antigen plus they are of single class as well what is class see antibodies are of various type there is igg igm a d e so only a particular type of antibody that is ige a will be secreted by the plasma cell except there is one exception here where we have some igm secretion in the primary response and then later on in secondary response this igm changes to igg okay that is an exception where plasma cell in secondary response that is first time there is exposure to the antigen which we are talking and then second time there is exposure to the antigen so in second response there will be production of the iggs and for this second response we need memory cells so here i talked about you see b cell differentiation into lymphoblast and then plasma blast and plasma cells but some of these lymphoblast they don't form the plasma blast instead 
they go on to form the memory b cells memory b cells and these memory b cells then go and sit throughout to the lymph nodes of the body so even if the exposure as at a particular site say from git the exposure to the antigen has occurred but with the formation of memory b cells these b cells will move into the circulation and via circulation they will go and sit in all the lymphoid tissue throughout the body so that second exposure can be from any site still the response will be much better than the primary exposure okay we will see the differences between the primary immune response and secondary immune response a little bit later right coming to the antibodies now what is the structure of these antibodies and how do they act now these antibodies are made up of heavy light chain pairs so here in this diagram we are seeing two heavy chains these blue ones are heavy chains and two light chains these red ones are the light chains so there are two heavy chains and two light chain pairs now these heavy and light chains have certain regions uh, that is v region that is the variable region okay then this variable region by a j segment that is joining segment is attached to the constant portion so all this is constant portion and how these regions are different basically this variable region the amino acid sequence which is there is different in all the antibodies and that is why antibodies are specific to a particular antigen okay so this forms the antigen binding ab is antigen binding region f is for fragment okay so antigen binding fragment of the antibody the other part fc part which is joined to variable region by joining segment is constant amino acid sequence okay so that is why c is for constant f is the fragment so fc part is constant and this is responsible for the biological properties of the antibody okay biological properties it is also known as the effector region effector region what is these biological properties we will see actually all the antibodies igg m a they differ from each other in certain biological aspect that is whether they will be able to cross the membrane or not whether they will be secreted so this is determined by this fc region also this fc portion has binding sites for complement okay so they can bind to the complement proteins right and they can also bind to other wbcs uh, like uh, macrophages and neutrophils so there is a binding site for uh, macrophages and neutrophils because they help in phagocytosis they help in opsonization they cause opsonization and help in phagocytosis plus they also cause complement activation again the details of this complement activation i have already discussed in the video on complement proteins you can check that out as well fine so that is the structure of antibodies antigen binding fragment has a variable sequence of amino acids for antigen specificity and constant portion is responsible for biological properties of the antibodies now i told you that there are two heavy and two light chains what are these heavy and light chains actually light chains can be of two types either lambda or there can be kappa chain but each antibody has only one type of uh, chain in fact each uh, b cell which is secreting the antibodies all the antibodies secreted from that particular b cell have only one type of light chain right and heavy chains are of nine types nine types okay and this is uh, again variable in different types of different classes of antibodies we'll see what are these heavy chains and how they are variable just one thing here i forgot that uh, these light chains you see they are attached to each other by these disulfide linkages so this is the disulfide linkages how heavy chains are attached and heavy chain is attached to light chain also by disulfide linkages and these disulfide linkages are not very rigid they allow little bit mobility okay so you see this part the variable portion of uh, heavy chain is attached to the constant portion by disulfide linkages so there is little bit mobility here as well fine so that is the structure of antibodies moving on to the classes of antibodies 
there are basically five classes of antibodies uh, i remember it as gamde gamde okay now these antibodies have different biological properties first is igg i told you about the heavy chain see these igg have gamma heavy chain so that's why the name igg g stands for gamma okay so this can be any of these heavy chains gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 or gamma 4 but this igg antibodies they are produced in secondary response and they are very good in complement activation so they are the ones involved in complement activation igm can also be involved but it is mainly igg for complement activation then igm we have again heavy chain is mu mu and then m right hence the name and this igm is involved in primary response but igm has one very special property that is we have talked about heavy and light chains and i told you only two heavy and two light chains so let us move on to structure little bit i will explain there that this igm you see is pentavalent in nature that means here also there is this heavy chain and then there are light chains right then here heavy chains light chains okay two heavy more chains light chains so what is this pentavalent so this two heavy and two light chains it is known as a monomer and when it comes five times it is known as a pentamer and IgM is actually a pentamer okay and that is why it is also known as high molecular weight antibody it is a huge antibody right and because of this it cannot cross any membranes okay like it cannot cross the placenta it is only IgG which can cross the placenta so that was important for IgM antibody and uh, this pentamer this all the monomers are connected by means of a J chain right coming to next antibody that is iga heavy chain is alpha 1 or alpha 2 and again it can be a monomer which circulates in the blood or it can be a dimer which is attached by means of j chains so pentamer we saw in igm this is a dimer and this iga is a secretory antibody that means it is secreted into the lumen maybe of gi tract it is secreted in the breast milk so it provides immunity to the newborns by this means okay now for secretion there is a secretory chain which is attached on this antibody structure and it is synthesized by the epithelial cells okay so remember iga is secreted in the form of dimer which is connected either by j chain or by secretory chain and it is the secretory antibody fine then igd heavy chain is the delta chain and these are the receptors on the b cell right and finally we have ige which has epsilon heavy chain and this is important for activation of the mast cells so what happens that uh, one part of uh, antibody that is the antigen binding sites attaches to the antigen and the fc portion attaches to the mast cells and uh, once this happens mast cells release their content mainly histamine into the circulation so that is iga antibody it is important in allergic response so those were the different classes of antibodies remember here that we have discussed only about the heavy chain different types and based on the heavy chain the name is given to the antibody light chains can be either lambda or kappa fine now let us see how these antibodies act so there are various mechanism of action of these antibodies one is agglutination where you see here this red one is showing the antigen and this green one is showing the antibody so what has happened in the structure of antibody we saw because of two heavy chain and two light chain there are two antigen binding sites right both sides we have antigen binding sites so one antibody can bind to at least two antigens IgM can bind to ten antigens because it's a pentameric structure, and each monomer has having two antigen binding sites. So pentameric structure will have ten antigen binding sites. So because of this two antigen binding sites, the binding can be such that all the invader molecules can be 
clumped together. So this is what? Clumping. This is very famously you see in agglutination of the red cells when you do for blood grouping, isn't it? All the red cells come together because the antibodies attach to different red cells. So this is known as agglutination. And once the clump is formed, the macrophages will come and phagocytose this clump. They will clear away the clump. So that is agglutination. Precipitation is a soluble antigen because of this formation of a large molecule becomes insoluble. Again, it can be cleared by the macrophages. Then third is neutralization. Neutralization is where there is a toxin circulating in blood and this toxin has toxic sites, right? Antigenic sites, the toxic sites by which it is able to act on the cells. So that toxic sites are covered by the antibody. So that is neutralization. Now the toxin is neutralized. It is not able to act, right? Then lysis. In this, the antibody may be so effective that it can damage the cell membrane of the invader or the foreign agent. So that is lysis. Very important is opsonization and complement activation. Actually, antibodies mechanism of action, this is just secondary mechanism of action. It is not that effective. More important is opsonization and complement activation. What is opsonization? In opsonization, you see here the diagram is showing this is the antigen. Antibodies is attached to the antigen by the antigen binding site. And in the structure we saw FC portion has a macrophage binding site, right? So here you see that it is binding to the macrophage. So this process helps in phagocytosis. So that is opsonization that is making the invader more tasty for the phagocytes. Okay, then complement activation. Again, we saw in the structure that FC portion is a complement binding site. And when antibody binds to this antigen, there is increase in affinity for that complement binding site for complement proteins. And then this antigen antibody complex can cause the complement protein activation. So that is how antibodies act. In total, there are six mechanisms of action. But most important ones are opsonization and complement activation. Moving on to the last part of the video, that is the primary immune response and secondary immune response. So here this graph is showing on x-axis time in weeks and y-axis it is showing the level of antibody production. Red part is showing the primary immune response that is when knife B cell is for the first time exposed to the antigen. So you see what is happening that the response is starting after one week. It is taking so much time and this is known as lag phase. Okay, lag phase. Then the response starts rising but again it takes little bit time. So this phase is known as log phase when the antibody concentration in the blood starts rising. Log phase. Then for some time there is a plateau in the response. Okay. Plateau phase. Plateau occurs because the antibodies are being produced and they are being destroyed also. So the rate of production is same as the rate of destruction. So that is plateau phase. And finally, we have phase of decline. Decline phase. Okay. Where the rate of destruction of antibodies is more than the rate of the production. Fine. So this is primary immune response. What are the characteristics that it takes a long time to produce? So log phase is very long. Plus, the response is not that much, okay? The concentration of antibodies doesn't go to very high level and it comes down also very fast. Also, the antibodies produced in this response are of IgM type, IgM type. But in secondary response phase, which is depicted here, you see that response is much faster. It starts within three days, okay? The response goes much higher that is the concentration of antibodies which is produced is much much more and it lasts longer also it comes down very late okay and this is all because of the memory b cells they are like prepared for the antibody response okay and the antibodies produced in the secondary immune responses of igg type Okay, so those are the differences between the primary and secondary immune response. That is very important and it forms the physiological basis of vaccination as well. So when we vaccinate a person, 
what we are doing is we are artificially stimulating this primary immune response and then the memory b cells are going to form and they are going to sit at various lymphoid organs and when the actual invader comes then the body will be able to respond much much faster and much better so it will help the body clear the invading organism right so that was all about humoral immunity, the development of the B cells, the formation of the antibodies, structure of antibodies, classes of antibodies and the mechanism of action of antibodies. Plus also the differences between the primary and secondary immune response. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do press the like button, share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.